D&D features a wondrous variety of different dragons. The most iconic of them are the dragons following a classical European sense. They're cruel, greedy, terrifying monsters whose breath attacks are burning death. But along with these evil dragons, the D&D world also has a number of good aligned dragons. They are the light that balances out the darkness, supporting truth, justice, beauty, and love. Or at the very least, they operate on this level of basic decency and are not inclined to act out malevolence. But what kind of dragon is the most good aligned? How virtuous do they actually go? Ready your locate creature and commune spells, as we are going to take a close look at all the draconic heroes of D&D, with the goal of determining which type is the noblest of them all. I'm going to start with the lesser end of goodness and work my way, proceeding towards the most righteous that I can determine. Before we enter this glorious hall, make sure that you have given honor by hitting the like button and subscribing. Toll the bell and let your tribute resound through the sanctuary of draconic majesty. There is no need to slink about with the worms of the underworld. Spread your wings and journey courageously into the realm of many wonders. Moonstone Dragon. Personality. Playful. Suave. Cunning. Charismatic. Themes. Moon. Dreams. Inspiration. Grace. Elegance. Fay. Interplanar. Prizes. Silver. Platinum. Mithril. Things with deep sentimental value. Allies. Potentially anyone. Layer. Wilderness area with ample moonlight at night. Magical portals. Enchantment magic. Intruders are magically banished. Typical good deeds. Inspires artists, thinkers, and heroes. Moonstone dragons are true dragons with a Feywild origin. While Fizban's treasury classifies them as neutral, they do seem to be much closer to good than evil. Even the worst of them are described as merely pompous and ill-behaved, though still gentle and curious. Young moonstones are more capricious and prankster-like, as many kids and adolescents are, and adult moonstones tend to be wise teachers, legendary storytellers, and these magical beings who travel between the material, ethereal, and Feywild planes. Their influence upon people's dreams inspires great poetic works, deep thoughts, and heroic bravery. So while I suppose we cannot consider the Moonstone Dragons on the whole to be decidedly good aligned, they are undoubtedly good leaning. Fairy Dragon Personality, fun, mischievous, sneaky, clever, smart. Themes, magic, fey, invisibility, trickster. Prizes, any kind of treasure, even small baubles and trinkets. Allies with good-humored, fun companions. Lair, forest, grove, or cave. Chaos magic causes spell ricochets, grasping plants. Typical good deeds brings about laughter, frustrates or disorients evildoers. A fairy dragon, similar to the copper and brass dragons that we're about to see, is not exceedingly virtuous. It's chaotic good in alignment, though the good part of that is really not very far along into the good spectrum. A fairy dragon doesn't really go out of its way to harm people, it doesn't typically commit terrible sins, and in the end, it does follow its conscience. But more than anything, it's a magical prankster. It's a Feywild dragon that revels in mischief. The older fairy dragons can wield some rather potent magic, which we like to hope they wield against the wicked and would-be villains. Copper dragon. Personality. Crafty. Pranking. Cranky. Envious. Possessive. Cautious. Hospitable. Themes. Acid. Hills, Highlands, Trickster, Storytelling, Music, Jokes, Riddles, Prizes, Coins and Wealth, Art Objects and Oddities, Allies with Bards, Performers, Storytellers, and Charismatic Creatures, 
Layer, hill cave, narrow tunnels, secret chambers, spikes, mud pits, hidden treasure. Typical good deeds, hosts and offers hospitality, spreads cheer. Copper dragons are similar to brass dragons in some ways. They both love social interaction, conversations, getting to know interesting people. They're both likely to get along famously with high charisma characters. Also, like the brass dragons, a copper dragon can only change shape if it's ancient, meaning that most of them will not possess the ability to don a human or animal form. Though copper dragons are ultimately good-hearted, they're not very high on the good scale. They still possess the greedy, miserly ways that we associate with chromatic dragons, and they are temperamental creatures that can easily become cross, defensive, and upset. In a way, they're more complex than many of the other metallic dragons in that regard. They have their good moods, they have their bad moods, just like real people do. More than anything, copper dragons love things like music, stories, performances, and riddles. They are certainly the most bardic of all the dragons, which appeals to me greatly. If we imagine the alignments of D&D as spectrums of a good evil axis and a law chaos axis, the copper dragon would actually be fairly close to neutral, but it'd be a little ways out into good and a little ways out into chaotic, maybe a moderate way out into chaotic, but on the whole, they are not really the most virtuous of the dragons. Brass Dragon. Personality. Hypersocial. Talkative. Extroverted. Themes. Fire. Sunlight. Desert. Canyon. Conversation. Prizes. Magic items that allow for communication. Sentient items. Genie lamps. Allies. Essentially anyone. Layer. Arid. Sand or loose gravel. Windy. Buried treasure. Typical good deeds. Engages in fun games. Shares interesting and useful information. Entertains and helps travelers that converse with it. Brass dragons are the extreme extroverts of dragon kind. They are chaotic good and they are fire breathing, which is a great representation of their enthusiastic natures. They dwell in hot, dry areas and are likely to be rivals and enemies of blue dragons who layer in similar types of regions. I cannot consider brass dragons the most good aligned. They often want something out of people. They want a good chat in the least, but those who try to avoid a brass dragon will find themselves chased down or even put to sleep by its magical breath, only to awaken in the dragon's clutches with it demanding to know about them. However, this is due more to the dragon's immense curiosity and its hypersocial nature, not some kind of wicked streak. Like many other metallic dragons, a brass dragon can shape change into the form of a humanoid or a beast, though only the ancient brass dragons are capable of doing so. Pseudo dragon. Personality elusive, playful, shy, selective, emotive. Themes draconic familiar, tiny lesser dragon, telepathic. Prizes simple, genuine treasures and gifts. Allies. Rarely makes allies and only does so with worthy people. Layer. Tree hollow or a cave. Typical good deeds. Provides companionship and even aid in battle to someone who has proven to be good-hearted. The most minuscule of dragon kind is the pseudo-dragon. It is a tiny thing. It lacks toughness. It's shy yet playful. It's benevolent. It's empathetic. It's telepathic. Pseudo dragons are well known for their service as arcane familiars. You might be inclined to trust or at least regard well a mage who has a pseudo dragon as his magical pet, for these little dragonlings are quite repulsed by abuse and ill treatment. A mage who is the master of a pseudo dragon is really the friend of the pseudo dragon and probably shares the critter's jovial attitude and sensitive nature. There's something heartwarming about a dragon who possesses whimsy and innocence. This creature reminds us that we all have a child in our hearts. After all, what is D&D without the play and imagination of childhood? In terms of how good aligned it is, 
I have to put it above dragons like copper and brass, which are limited in the ways in which they embody goodness. There's a purity to the pseudo-dragon's goodness that shines above those semi-good dragons, but I cannot place it any higher, for the dragons beyond this point take good to a higher level. You could even say a higher stakes level. They willingly face the worst of horrors. They courageously put themselves at risk, even self-sacrificing for the sake of the greater good. Children are beautiful creatures, but they are children after all. They're like unmolded clay, unrealized potential. It is more righteous and more virtuous to possess knowledge of the dark side, to have felt its temptations, to have suffered its hooks and stings, and still choose to confront it for that chance to triumph over evil, even if it means you might pay the ultimate price. Crystal Dragon. Personality. Optimistic. Nurturing. Cheerful. Caring. Themes. Radiant. Psionic. Positive energy. Short-range teleportation. Shape-changing. Prizes. Diamonds. Reflective items. Star charts and works of astronomy. Divination items. Illumination items. And healing items. Allies. Potentially anyone. Layer. Cold Wasteland, Ice Castle, Beguiling Whispers, Gleaming Starlight, Typical Good Deeds, Takes Care of Others, Infuses Life Wherever It Goes. Crystal Dragons live in remote, desolate, and frigid places, yet they are some of the friendliest, most hospitable dragons out there. Fizban's Treasury actually categorizes them as chaotic neutral, but if you read their lore, they really seem more like neutral good, or at least chaotic good. They are innately, psionically connected to the positive energy plane, and they are just brimming full of life and optimistic disposition. In this way, they are the opposite of the topaz dragon that we saw in the evil dragons video. They are caregivers, nurturing hosts, and essentially psionic mages of light. Adult and older crystal dragons have an unbelievable shape-changing feature, being able to transform into any medium or small creature as just a bonus action. They do retain all their own abilities, so in that way it has its limitations, but it's mind-blowing all the potential that exists in such ability. The crystal dragon is somewhat confusing to me, but one thing is crystal clear. It is definitely not evil, not in the least. And the neutral classification really is in name only. I don't agree with that. If we look at the creature's actual personality traits and the things that crystal dragons typically do, it is undoubtedly good aligned. Bronze dragon. Personality. Freedom loving. Organized. Fair. Strategic. Themes. Storm. Sea. Coast. War. Shape changing. Prizes, treatises on war and strategy, ceremonial items, treasure from sunken ships, allies, anyone fighting against tyrants and evildoers, lair, coastal cave, sunken treasure, fog, thunder, typical good deeds, helps people fight against tyranny and evil, barters fairly for things at once, keeps watch over the coasts and waters of its region. Bronze dragons are coastal guardians, keeping a lookout for trouble in the water or on the shore. They watch for invaders, marauders, and pirates, as well as anyone who has fallen into dangerous hazards that they might be able to help out. Adult and older bronze dragons can shape change into the form of humanoids and beasts. It often uses such guises to swim alongside ships, say as a dolphin, or maybe to discreetly enter a ship as a rat or a bird. That way it can inspect its cargo and learn of its intentions. This spying is done for the sake of good, for bronze dragons will not steal. They will trade in a forthright manner for whatever it is that they desire. They have keen minds and are very intelligent, typically possessing a wealth of knowledge, especially when it comes to battle tactics and warfare. 
In fact, bronze dragons are some of the most war-loving creatures in existence. But they do not promote war in and of itself. Rather, they are fascinated by strategy, and they will always support the most morally just side of a conflict. Bronzes are very disciplined, responsible, and they are well organized. They detest tyranny and malevolent oppression. Silver Dragon Personality Friendly Staunch ally Encouraging Respectful Themes Cold Intermediary between gods and mortals Guide Prizes Relics from the past Volumes of history Innovations from various societies Beautiful works of art Allies Essentially anyone Lair Mountain peak or mountain citadel, snow, fog, icy wind. Typical good deeds provides aid of all kinds to those who seek it out. The silver dragon represents the archetype of the just king, the ruler who is based in wisdom, perception, and virtue, who presents the cold truth, who allows people to be free and to develop. The just king serves as a reliable foundation when the people are in need. This contrasts with the evil king, who can either manifest as an iron-fisted tyrant that oppresses the people, or as a corrupt manipulator who dons a mask of justice while he enslaves people to his ideologies. While the gold dragon, and even the bronze dragon to a degree, are more active in their fight against evil, going so far as to root out forces of darkness, Silver is more likely to remain upon his throne, taking action only when someone seeks him out for a noble cause. Or maybe if some truly malicious enemy intrudes into the land, then he'll activate, but otherwise, Silvers would prefer that you grow stronger, that you strengthen, and win your own victory. But if the odds are too overwhelming, the Silver will indeed leave its throne and bring devastating retribution to the foe. The Silver Dragon is an immensely good-aligned creature, but there is one who is slightly more so, one who often ventures out into the world, who more often goes into the wilds, to the corrupt parts of society, even into the dungeons of darkness, to face down the sources of malevolence. Gold Dragon Personality, wise, benevolent, orderly, humble, private, aloof, mystical. Themes, fire, majesty, hoarder, hides true identity, holy seeker. Prizes, pearls, gems, and a large treasure hoard. Allies, essentially anyone. Lair, waterfall cave, lake or river. Glimpses of the immediate future, intruders banished into a dream plane, magically warded secret treasure vault. Typical good deeds, provides wisdom and counsel, promotes virtue wherever it goes, helps those in need, hunts down evil. The gold dragon is the most mystical and secretive of the metallic dragons. It is also the most humble and simultaneously the most powerful. It is a source of tremendous wisdom, though there is a good chance that it will not let on that it is a gold dragon while it is providing said wisdom. When it's not within the privacy of its home, it usually dons an alter ego when it ventures out, from that of a simple animal to a humble person, to a spellcaster of the light or even a questing paladin. They are lawful good, and at all times, they act and speak in a way that helps others that brings about good order. While remaining discreet, they will seek out evildoers in order to put a stop to them. Golds can eat almost anything, and they delight most of all in consuming pearls and other precious gems, though they do not gorge themselves without control. In fact, they are some of the most hoarder-like of all dragon kind, amassing incredible amounts of treasure and items, which they carefully hide in warded vaults deep within their layers. 
The gold dragon thus receives the crown as the most good aligned dragon in D&D 5e. This of course is not counting dragon gods such as Bahamut, who would be on a higher level still of course, but in terms of what we have as entries in the actual 5e bestiaries, the gold dragon is the most noble hearted, the least egotistical, the most virtuous, the most willing to put itself right on the front line to ferret out and strike down sources of corruption and malevolence. While the silver dragon is very socially oriented and very righteous, it's an emboldening king, the gold dragon is a savior who chooses to walk through the valley of darkness, helping and strengthening those he meets along the way. He conquers the vile enemies and selflessly risks his very life in order to save others. Let us give a mighty cheer for the gold and for all these dragons. They remind us that power can be wielded to do great amounts of good. They show us that fierceness and ambition can drive us to overcome our plights, to rise above our misfortunes. It is important that we face the evil dragon in the cave of terrors, and it is equally important that we commune with the good dragon in the pool of wisdom. If you enjoy this kind of content, I encourage you to support me either on Patreon, where you can get monthly exclusive 5e content, or by purchasing a copy of my 5e book, Esper's Emporium of Esoterica, or another product in my shop. Links to everything are down in the video description. And I want to thank you, as always, for watching. May you find the good dragons who will aid you in your life quests, and may your adventures be many.